Number 23. An electron is accelerated in a uniform electric field having a strength of 2 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter. Letter A. What energy in kilo, kilo electron volts is given to the electron if it is, if it is accelerated, can't read today, uh, through 0.4 meters? One other important thing I didn't highlight is the, it says an electron. All right. So let's write down what we know. They tell us the electric field strength here is going to be 2 times 10 to the 6th volts per meter. So that's cool. They want us to calculate the energy. Uh, so in other words, they want us to calculate the change in the electron's potential energy. Okay. They also tell us that the distance in which it was accelerated through is 0.4 meters. And we can actually assume that to kind of be the distance between two parallel plates. Um, uh, the reason also is because the reason why I can assume that is they told us a uniform electric field. I know in a parallel plate, the electric field is uniform and constant. All right. So the distance, therefore, is going to be 0.4 meters. Okay. And I also know one other thing. They told us an electron. As soon as you hear that, if they say a proton or an, uh, an electron or a doubly charged ion, whatever it is, you know that the base charge of an electron or proton is going to be the magnitude that is, is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. It's the magnitude that's really important here. Don't worry about the sign. Okay. It's the magnitude. So what can I do? Well, I realize that, right? I mean, right away, this pops out at me. If I know electric field, I know the distance basically between those assumed two parallel plates. I can simply find then the voltage bet between those two plates, right? Electric field multiplied by the distance. And all we need to do now is plug it in. <clears throat> so two times 10 to the sixth, multiply them by 0 0.4. And what do we get? Turn on the calculator, 2 times 10 to the 6th times 0.4. And this comes out to be about 800,000. So 8 times 10 to the 5th, and that's going to be in terms of volts. Now, look at what you got. If you now know voltage, and you want to calculate potential difference, right, excuse me, potential energy difference, because potential difference technically is, a, is voltage, right? So potential energy difference, what do we need to know? Well, we need to know the charge. Why? Well, look at the formula over there on the right. The formula over there on the right says that the potential difference between two points is basically equal to then the change in the potential energy of the object divided then by the charge of that particular object. So if I want to solve for the change in potential energy, just simply multiply the Q. So change in voltage multiplied by Q. What's the voltage? It's 8 times 10 to the fifth. What's the charge? It's 1.6, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And there we go. So delta PE now is going to be equal to that value multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And it comes out to be about 1.28 times 10 to the minus 13th. And that is in terms of joules. Okay. Now, what did they ask us? They asked us for kilo electron volts. So we're going to do the conversion quickly. All right. So let's just move that up a little bit. So we know that we got 1.28 times 10 to the minus 13th joules. We know that every joule is 1.6, excuse me, I should say every electron volt, right? One electron volt has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. So the joules go bye bye. I don't want an electron volts. I want it in kilo electron volts. So that means I just got to convert that into kilo electron volts. For every one kilo, there's a thousand base, right? So that goes bye-bye. And here's your calculation now. So take that answer that you got before, divide it by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, and then divide it by 1,000, 800. Okay. So the answer would be then the change in the energy here is going to be 800, 800 electron volts. Uh, well, kilo electron volts. I already forgot what I converted into. All right, so that takes care of letter A. Now, where are we going to put letter B? We'll see. Over what distance would it have to be accelerated to increase its energy by 50 giga oh, electron volts? I don't want to do this one. What do you say? I skip it. All right. All right. I'll do it. So, um, 
where am I gonna I don't even know where I'm gonna put it. okay let me just erase some of this work let me keep some of these values though they might come in handy and let me I don't I probably won't need that but we'll see all right how are you doing today by the way hope you're having a good day hope your semester is going swimmingly all right so it says now over what distance uh, would it have to be accelerated to increase now its energy by, you know, 50 giga electron volts? So first thing, what the heck is that even in terms of just joules, right? 50 giga electron volts. Now giga is, uh, what the heck is it, 10 to the 9th? Yeah, I hope it is. <laughs> giga electron volt on the bottom, electron volt on the top. There's going to be basically 10 uh, to the ninth electron volts for every one giga. So we'll see you later. Then remember the electron volt to joule for every single electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. And what do we have? So we get 50 multiplied by 10 raised to the ninth times then 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And we get about now eight times 10 to the minus ninth. And that's going to be in terms of joules. Now, this is now the additional amount of energy, right? So we can say basically the change in the potential energy. Okay. All right, cool. So now if that's the amount of energy that we would have to input, how do we then find the distance? Well, it's kind of the backwards process, right? I know the potential energy difference and I know the charge of the electron. So therefore I can find the voltage. So voltage is equal to potential energy all over charge. So it's eight times 10 to the minus ninth, all divided by the charge of that electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. You might already be seeing a pattern here, right? I mean, look, you know, in terms of the conversions, they're basically divided, divided out. There's definitely a shorter way to do it. I just, I just prefer doing it, um, just using standard units, but might not be the best actually technique meaning more calculations sometimes is not better. It increases your chance for error, but that's the way it makes sense to me. I, I mean, it makes sense the other way too, but I just sometimes, sometimes it's confusing when you can use the non-standard units and when you can't. So I just say, don't worry, just always have it in standard units. Anyway, this is in terms of now volts. Okay. So if that's now the voltage and I want to find the distance, I got to know the electric field, right? Because of the second formula there. So what is that now? So we know that the voltage between the two plates is going to be equal to the electric field strength, which is constant multiplied by the distance. If I want to solve for the distance, divide out E from both sides. So we get that. And now I'm going to plug in the voltage five times 10 to the 10th divided by then that constant electric field, which was two times 10 to the sixth. And let's see, divide by two times 10 to the sixth. And that works out to be 25,000. So 2.50, I guess, three sig figs <clears throat> uh, times 10 to the fourth. And that's going to be in terms of, yeah, meters. Okay, so that's that's how far it would have to be accelerated. Cool. All right, guys, so thank you very much for tuning in. I do hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe and hit that like button, smash it, whatever you got to do. And uh, we'll see you in the next problem. Take care.